Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a variation on a classic fly. We're going to tie the pheasant tail, but we're going to tie it as the Quasimodo pheasant tail. It's similar, it's a little thicker, it's got some flash, it's on a curved shank hook. It has to have a bead, I'm using a tungsten bead here. It's a sweet little versatile pattern, you know, it could be a chunkier mayfly, it could potentially be a caddis pupa. We're going to get started on this thing right now. Okay, so in the vise today, I have a Tiemco uh, 2488H. It's a curved pupa hook, um, and it's heavy, one size heavy. For a bead, I'm gonna use plumbing tungsten bead in 564th, two millimeter copper. So to start this fly off, we're gonna start with some pheasant tail, and I'm gonna strip some, line up the tips, and then strip it from the feather here. Um, I'm gonna grab six to eight strands. For thread, I'm gonna use UTC, um, rusty brown and 70 denier. I'm just going to start this right behind the bead of the hook. This is where if you want to add lead wire to seat your bead, you can. Um, for me, I find when I do add lead in here, I tend to create too chunky of a profile. So oftentimes on size 16s or 18s, I'll leave it out. If I go a little bit larger, I will put it in. So I'm just going to take my pheasant tail and measure this against the shank of the hook. Um, we want it roughly half that length. I'm going to tie it in right at the bend. Um, it's just a couple turns, get it right on top. Check my length. It looks a tiny bit too long. I'll just pull it out a tiny bit. And that's good there. So basically with this fly, um, the best thing you can do is just economy of thread wraps. Economy of thread wraps, economy of materials. You only need one or two wraps to tie things in. Um, make sure you're not going up and down the shank too much. So I'm going to tie in my copper wire. I have copper ultra wire and extra small. You could probably get away with small as well. So I'm going to tie this in right here where I left my pheasant tail and bring it back up to the bead. So put that right in there. Watch your hook point. Bringing that all the way up. Okay, the next thing I'm going to tie in is a piece of flash. And this is going to be Hedron Polar Flash in Pearl. It's a little bit crinklier, but similar to, um, to Flashaboo. So let me tie that in here. Get it right on top of the hook shank. Bring it around and bring it back. So this is what I mean by economy of materials. I haven't cut anything out yet. I have my pheasant tail up here. I'm going to bring it back. And I purposely left my thread here so that I can come back a little bit more on this tail and bring it down to where it needs to end, right at the beginning of this sharp bend here, right where my uh, hook barb is. So that way I don't create too much bulk here and I don't get a bump at the tail. So let me bring my thread back up. I'm gonna leave it, cover this up, and then I'm gonna leave it right where my thorax, right in front of the hook point. So I'm gonna start wrapping here Watch your hook point. This pheasant tail can be pretty fragile. I like to take slow, even wraps here so that I can make sure I'm not trapping anything and I do get a nice, even body. Okay. I'm going to tie that off. I'm going to make sure that my butts are on top of the hook shank here. That's enough wraps. Let me bring my flash over and it's going to be right over the back here. So I'll throw one wrap over that. Leave that there. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to wrap my wire forward now, but I'm going to make sure I don't move that flash too much here. You want it relatively best you can on top of the hook shank. Got my flash in my thread. So we're going to tie this off here. One, two, and then I can break that off. I'm going to cut my flash out of here. And then I'm going to take the same piece of flash, double it over, and then tie it in double. So this is going to be my flash back. So you, whenever you tie something and you want it to be on top, it has to be tied in first here when I go back. So I'm going to take the same chunk of pheasant tail feather fibers and pull them back. And that's going to be my wing case. 
So right there, I can just leave that with one wrap on there. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab your typical pheasant tail thorax, which is going to be peacock curl. And I have two strands here. They're a little bushier. You could use two to three. Um, I tend to keep it as, try to keep the least amount of peacock curl in here as I can. Um, okay. So we're going to wrap this forward here. And then right behind the bead, we're going to tie this off. One, two behind, one in front, one behind. And then I should be able to break these off, break them off clean. So next I have, you can use pheasant tail fibers for this. Um, I tend to like to use a game hen. Um, I have partridge here. I've taken a partridge feather, feather off the wing, stripped out the tip and made little legs here. So basically what I'm going to do is put legs on either side. There's probably six to eight fibers on each side. All right, so I'm going to adjust my hook here in the vise a little bit, and then I'm going to tie in my legs. So I have some partridge here, and let me... We're going to put this right on top of the hook shank with this V here. Spin my thread counterclockwise so I can get it laying back. Oop. Okay. And then from here, I can kind of pull them down and adjust them a little bit. I'm not super picky about where my legs end up. Um, you want them to look good, obviously, but as long as they're there, they're good. Okay, so tighten that up. I'm going to make a wrap over this and then cut these off flush. As flush as I can. Okay. And you can kind of still move these around. When I pull my wing case over, it'll tame them a little bit. So grab just your pheasant tail first here. Pull it over, spread it out so it's nice and even. You'll see it kind of tamed my uh, legs there a little bit. Throw one wrap over them. Make sure they're where I want them. And then I'm going to pull my uh, flash over here. So make sure you gra gather all your flash. And then another wrap over. Tighten it down a little bit here. I'm going to throw a wrap in front of these here. Kind of pull them back a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here with my scissors. Um, and this is when you really want a nice pair of fine point scissors. So you can get as close as you can here. My scissors are a little dull. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it as good as I want. But we'll get it close. A little bit of a tag. Okay, good enough. We'll just throw a wrap over. I'm going to throw one whip finish in here, just one, because I don't want to build up too much bulk. And I'm going to cover this in UV, at least my shell back here. So for UV, I have Loon Fly Finish in Thin. So I'm just going to put this on the back as a shell back. I'm going to stabilize this in my hand so I don't put too, too much. Just squeeze gently. Get a little bit on there. Bring it back. And then I'm going to try and get a little tiny bit on my wraps down in here. Just to secure it. Rotate that around. Tiny, tiny bit. Okay. It's probably good there. Let me hit this with my light. And that's pretty much it, guys. Super simple little attractor pattern. Works as a stone, works as a chunkier mayfly. Guys, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so you're notified of all of our future fly tying videos, and we'll see you next time.